14 on Friday, okay. but we skipped 13, right? Mm -hmm. Only because I had somebody scheduled to, to be here. So we're going backwards, chapter 13. We're still ahead of time, so don't worry about it. I have two, two extra days always in the class, just in case. Mm -hmm. Why huh? Why I'm just saying don't worry about it. If you feel like you need it, you know, we're going to finish. The last day, the 27th? It's... Uh, the last day is the one that we will finish. Yeah. Twenty-seven. Maybe. And then. The and then Thursday there's nothing else. The test. Yes. Following Thursday is the exam. The fun exam. All right. So now that we have the twins in the back, we can start. Great. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> we look to end, right? So, we're going to start with understanding what the word means because there's no way to really understand uh, a process without understanding what it means. So, the word mortgage, if we separate it, we split it into two, the word mortgage, right? It has two logical meanings. Can anybody tell me what the word mort means? Death. 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 Yes. Death. Crazy, right? No. Morticia. Like what? Morticia. Morticia from Adam's family? Yes. Okay. That was easy. What does that have to do with mortgages? <laughs> Well, Mort. Mort, got you. All right. Now, the good news is that when we're talking about mortgages and we talk about death, is not your death, is the death of the loan. Okay? So, while you have an active mortgage and you owe money to the bank, all right. Until that loan dies, the bank has something called a grip or pledge. All right? So the word mortgage. Until the loan dies, the bank has a grip on your property that you have pledged as security. All right, I'm going to explain this better in a second. I just want you to understand what the words. Make sure your phones are away from you, on silent, away from you. Turn it upside down so you don't look at it. You're not tempted. Thank you very much. And as I was saying, sorry, there's a grip on the property that you've pledged as security. Okay, until the loan dies, Janelle. <laughs> I'm trying to put it on silent. There's always a turn off button. <laughs> Do you guys have, there's something on your phones called in case of emergency. Do you guys ever activate that, those options? Yeah. Uh, this is when um, you can literally turn off all the features on your phone, but if those contacts reach out to you, right, or if you have to reach out to those contacts, it still works. Okay? Good morning. How are you? Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> So, as I was saying, it's if, unless it's like a real emergency, I, I mentioned this and I'll keep on mentioning, make sure your phones are on silent and turned upside down because I see you guys always touching it, always going at it. You know, we were just talking earlier before we started the class, we are just talking about a few people that take the exam over and over and over. Most of the times, and the state exam you pay 40, I'm not talking about you, the other end. Uh, <laughs> Most of the times, it's because either you guys don't study or in class you're not paying attention. Do you guys understand? 
So again, all I'm asking is for four weeks, your fully undivided attention. After that, you can do whatever you want, okay? All right, so just give an extra second for Anna to, the other Anna to sit down. So what are you now? So it's Michael, just Michael? Yeah. You didn't want to deal with Anna anymore? The last time I so just Anna, the other Anna, and no more Anna. Got it. All right, so are you here? We're good? All right, so as I was saying, mortgage, mortgage grip on the property that you've pledged as security. Now, there are two documents that involve mortgages. The first document is the actual mortgage. And this document equals security or collateral, which is exactly the same thing as house because what we pledge security or collateral because we've pledged the property as a security for something called a loan right we needed money to buy and said hey bank would you lend to me we're gonna highlight all this in a second would you lend to me and in return I'll give you the property as security now we don't own the property yet but we're giving up the property right away so the moment you're signing, I promise to pay you back. You're also promising, hey, if I default, take my house. You got it? So that's what's happening. You give up the house right away in exchange for a loan. And that loan is the second document, is represented by a document called promissory note or bond. This equals the loan, this equals money, okay? So, concept is very simple. When you're mortgaging, you're giving up your house in exchange for money, very simple. Two documents are involved, one says I promise to pay, here's the security in case I don't pay. Here's the collateral in case I don't pay. So bank, you don't lose everything, okay? Any questions so far? No. So when you see mortgage, what do you got to think about? Hmm? It's collateral. No. Nope. 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 Every time you see mortgage, is the house. Every time you see promissory note or bond, what do you see? Money. Money. You got it? And it will be clearer as we go through this uh, chapter. Mortgage is house. Promissory note is the cash. One in exchange for the other. Once you pay back, the bank has to release that grip. And I'm just summarizing the whole chapter. Once you pay back the loan, the cash that you borrowed, you, the bank has to release that grip and the house is now fully yours. It was already yours on title, but there was a lien, an encumbrance against the property. You guys remember liens and encumbrances? Yes. yes. All right, cool. Do you, or just saying? <laughs> just, I just want to make sure. Because I have some students that tend to agree with me just so I can move forward. I just want to make sure. Right? Yes. Say yes always, no matter what. I'm sorry? I would say no. <laughs> I said say yes all the time, no matter what. Whether you understand or not, you say yes or you can move forward. Mm -mm. No? Mm -hmm. All right, can I raise this? Yes. Great, yes. okay, so let's go back to this. So here's what we got. I already went through this pretty much, summarized the whole chapter already, but now we're going to go in detail. And it says, a mortgage is a pledge of real property that serves as security or collateral for a loan. And two documents are involved. We have the note or bond that says, I promise to repay the money you have just lent me the following rated terms. 
As it says here, it is the note that makes the borrower personally liable for the entire amount borrowed, even if the profit goes down in value. The note creates the personal obligation and the mortgage creates the lien. Please I like underline put stars there. And I said, the mortgage itself is a security instrument signed by the borrower, which states, if I don't keep my promise, right, to repay you as agreed, what can you do? Bank foreclose. What does that mean? Have the property sold at public auction and use the proceeds to pay the debt. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if I don't pay you, sell the house. You have the right to do so. Now, we're going to talk about it in a little bit. In the state of New Jersey, they cannot just go and sell your house. They have to go through court and enforce the mortgage terms. Not the loan terms, the mortgage terms. Next. <clears throat> it is the borrower who signs the mortgage who does the mortgaging. I already explained that. So it's incorrect to say to a buyer, hey, we'll find you a bank to give you a mortgage. Please highlight, underline, put stars. What the bank gives you is a loan, money. And it takes, in return, it takes a mortgage or holds a mortgage. What does that mean? They take the house in return. Now, you get to live in it, but they take that document that represents the house. They give you money, they take the document that represents the house. Okay? Therefore, the mortgagor is the owner of the property. People usually say it's the bank. It's incorrect because the bank is not the one giving you the house. They're giving you the loan. They're the lender. You are the mortgagor because you gave up the house. Okay? Mm -hmm. You're the one that pledged the property as a security to the lender. And the lender is the mortgagee. So remember that when you see the OR, it refers to the owner. You guys got it? So every time you see OR, it refers to owner. So. The lender. So this is very simple to make sure we get the terms correct left side right side on one side somebody gives up the house but receives money on the other side they receive the house but give up money so it's very easy on this side we have a rentor lessor mortgagor on the other side, we have grantee, lessee, mortgagee. Okay? Here's what I want you to remember Grantor is a seller. Lessor is the landlord. Or mortgagor is the borrower. Every time you see OR, equals owner. Okay? So every time you see E is who receives the property. So if you guys look at this, 
Let me explain it quickly. Grantor is the seller, right, that gives up the property at the sale to the buyer, the grantee, who receives the property. What does the buyer give up? Money. Money. What does the seller receive? Money. No, the seller receives the money. The lessor is the landlord who gives up the property temporarily to the lessee, the tenant. The tenant receives the property and what do they give up? Money. Money. What does the lessor receive? Money. Money. And then mortgagor. This is the one that's confusing because it's the borrower and the borrower doesn't own the property, right? But they're about to own the property. That's the purpose of the money. So they give up the property right away. So the mortgagor gives up the property and receives money in form of a loan. The mortgagee is the lender. They receive the property as collateral and give up money to the borrower. So buyer, tenant, lender or bank, whatever way you want to write. On this side, is the E's are always who receive the property and give up money. On this side, the O's is only who gives up the property and receives money. If you guys understand my handwriting, I'll translate for you. Do you have any questions? It's pretty clear. Pretty clear? Mm -hmm. So, it's your My handwriting is confusing. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. If you, um, I don't know, can you draw a line across each of them so you can um, ex explicitly differentiate? Because you do in comparison, that's what you do when you do a job like this. Just like that, okay? So it makes a lot of sense now that this to that, that to this, this to that. Mm -hmm. you get oh, I got it. I got you. Uh, thank you. <coughs> oh, am I am I crazy? No, 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 you're right. Okay, thank you. Oh, yeah. do, you, do you want me to answer that part? Or? No, no, no. Oh, okay. okay. Is it better this way? Yes. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. yeah, no? Okay. I think it's good. I think so. Can I make it colorful? Like, come on. Better house. It's too much colors. Too many colors? Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't know that was the house, I thought that was the right Depends on what you're giving up. That's All right. True. Questions? No? Anything else you want to point out for me to? No, it looks great. Looks great, thank you. So, this is a cycle. <laughs> okay, so this is the way it goes. And then it goes here. And then it goes here. And then that's it, it ends. Okay. Believe it or not, I learned with you guys. You don't tell me something to point out that's difficult for you, that's why I take my time. Some people don't like it, but I take my time because of that. Where are you stopped? Where are you challenged? Let me address it. Okay. All right, next. So. Hypothecation. Have you ever heard this term before? Hypothecation? Okay. Traditional loans, traditional loans require some type of collateral. I mean, all loans, right? But there's something called credit cards. In credit cards, the collateral in credit cards is your credit score. So what kind of collateral do they have? Nothing. Those are called unsecured loans, credit cards, okay? But most loans are secured loans. Secured by what? By something of value, okay? So if you need money right now, you go to the bank. Nowadays, they look at your credit score, but the rest of the world still looks at, give me hard evidence, meaning bring me jewelry, bring me a remote, bring me 
uh, chairs, bring me whatever you have of value to substantiate the amount that you want to borrow. We'll keep it here, and once you pay back, guess what you get? The stuff back. Almost like a pawn shop, right? It's the same thing. This is worth $500, they'll give you 200 right? And if you don't pay, guess what they get to do? Sell this, and they recover their money. Got it? Hypothecation, they don't keep this. Hypothecation, you get to keep this and borrow the money and use it and pay back as you go. Like your car is hypothecated. Your house is hypothecated. Nowadays, your cell phones are hypothecated. The difference is they can't come and collect the cell phones, right? But your car, what can you do? Repo. Your house, what can you do? Foreclose. You guys understand? So hypothecation is literally pledging property as security, like the, the car value or the house value, right? Without, please highlight, underline, put stars, without surrendering possession of the property. Okay, for some reason. Mm -hmm. Screen got stuck. So whoever's watching at home still has all because of you. You still have the other image. Okay, not right. Cool. So hypothecation is a term used to pledge property and secure for a loan, but without surrendering. That means you can drive your car even though you owe money. You can live in the house even though you owe money. You got it? Any questions on this? The word hypothecation means? They have to the house until you're not paying. No, the house is not yours. No, oh, 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 hold, on. hold on, hold on, The house is yours and the car is yours. Yes, but it's fine. If you don't pay, they have the, the, the right to come get it. Yeah. Yes. You can know whatever. I don't think that's the correct answer. Was that D? It's four answers. D. No, whatever. <laughs> you want to try to explain? Yeah. Give it a try. Let's go for your opinion. Okay. So, the rest of the Scooby-Doo faces. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Not offensive, because I love Scooby-Doo. But, you know what I'm talking about, right? Hmm? No questions? Great. So now we have trust deeds. In front of trust deed, I want you to write similar to mortgage. Similar to mortgage. Similar to mortgage. So a trust deed operates very similar to a mortgage. The difference between a trustee and a mortgage, the main difference, is that in the event of default, the lender with a trustee can gain possession of the property more promptly and more simply than the lender who foreclosed on the mortgage. Because in a with a trustee, we skip the whole judicial step, meaning I don't have to go to court, I go straight to auction. So I'm gonna give you one month notice, two month notice, three month notice, hey, you haven't paid, so we're gonna to go to auction. So two months from now, let's say, or a month from now, we're going to auction your property. In New Jersey, we are a judicial state. So we're going to give you one month notice. Hey, uh, you might have forgotten to pay your bill. Here's this month's bill plus last month. Second month, I guess you forgot it again. So here's this month's bill plus two months. Third month, yeah, uh, we're going to go to court. And then it could take 12 months. It could take... Two years, could take three years, 
It could take up to 10 years. In Jersey, it's crazy. The courts are so piled up with foreclosures that it could take a very, very long time before they go to auction. At the end of that period, right, then the judge is going to say, well, you haven't done anything to save your property. Sheriff, please sell the property at auction. So a month from now, two months or three months, your property will be sold. So the biggest difference, again, between trust deeds and mortgages is that mortgages to foreclose, bless you, to foreclose, we have all this period of time between you stopping to pay and losing your home. With trust deeds, <coughs> this is the period of time. Could be three months, could be four months, five months, you lose the property. Luckily, for the homeowners, Jersey is a judicial state, so we have to go through uh, courts, so mortgages only. Other states, they might have non-judicial rules, meaning trust deeds. Any questions on that? What you really need to remember for state exam is that trust deed is way faster for you to lose your property. Now, provisions of the note or bond. Provisions of the note or bond. The note or bond is where you promise to pay, right? Is your agreement to pay, yes? Yes. So, the, the provisions of the, that document state pretty much the loan amount, the interest rate, the terms, and the method of repayment. You guys got it? So in the note, what do we find? The loan itself and its terms, period. And whoever pledged the property and pledged the, to, to be part of the loan must sign. The next document is the mortgage. As I told you, there's two documents, right? Mortgage and promissory notes. And I told you that the mortgage equals house. house. So in the mortgage, you're going to find legal description of the property that's pledged as security. Because the mortgage is the house. That document represents the house. They could not repo the house. So they take the document to court to recover the house. You guys got it? Therefore, the house is described against the loan, promissory note, the quick reference, right? And everybody that's part of it must sign. Simple. It also sets, question? Kind of. Okay, go. Um, we said a house, but when there's land without a house, so the land would be the So the property. The property. Yeah. Okay. yeah, the property. So yes, it could be land, it could be the house, it could be commercial, it could be residential, it could be whatever. whatever. The, yeah, it's the property the itself. Yes. Okay, as we're gonna learn in chapter uh, 19, there's a, uh, the deed itself does not describe what's on it. So when I say property, it's the land. And when, I, when I'm saying house in this example, I'm referring to the same thing. It's just for the example so people can think of it. But yes, uh, it could be land by itself. Now, if we borrowed money, there are some duties and obligations, right? Especially against real estate. So the first three duties are very simple. Everybody knows this. Again, you borrow money, you have to pay the money. So pay the debt in accordance to the terms of the note. We have to pay taxes. Everybody knows this, right? Mm -hmm. If you have a house, you pay taxes. And you also have to maintain adequate insurance to protect who? Mm -hmm. To protect the lender. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So common sense, right, so far? All right, let's talk about these ones then. On the right hand side on top it says, what? you have to obtain the lender's authorization before making any major alterations to the property. Major. Yeah, you wanna finish that basement? Call the lender. You wanna finish the attic? Call the lender. Friendly? You wanna redo everything inside the house? Call the lender. You wanna extend? Your house, call the lender. What? Mm -hmm. Crazy, right? Why? Because of their it's interest. What's on it the is property. yours, but it's because of their interest. 
The property is yours. Remember, you get the deed at closing, so it's yours. Let me address just these other two, and now we'll go back to it. Maintain the property in good repairs at all times. Why do we have to maintain the property? Paint it, landscape, and all this stuff. Value. Again, to maintain the value. And then it says, until the mortgage has been in place for at least 30 days, obtain the lender's authorization before placing a second mortgage or junior lien against the property. Why? Here's what you guys got to understand. The lender has an interest in your property because they lend money to you, right? Yes. So somebody that has an interest in the property might have a say in what you can and cannot do with the property. Right? It is yours. I mean, nobody can take it away from you unless you stop paying. Right? But if somebody has an interest or a claim in the property, they got to be notified before you do anything that could affect their position. So, major alterations. Let's go back to insurance. Why do you have to have insurance on the property? Because if there's a fire or if there's water damage or whatever, you want to be able to get the property back to where it was. Why? To maintain the value. Right? Or better. Taxes. If you don't pay taxes, what could happen? We talked about this in Chapter 8. Tax sale. There could be a tax sale, so you lose the interest. Again, the lender will be prejudiced in this case, right? What about here? Let's say you finish everything in your property without the aid of a certified electrician or plumber. Because now everything's accessible. You have YouTube. You have uh, these uh, TV channels that show you how to flip the houses and let's kick this down and let's you know, take this wall out of here and make it all open. Until he realized that there was a load-bearing wall. <coughs> and he took it away. <coughs> right? What's the problem here? Why does the lender want you authoriz to authorize you to do these things? They want to make sure you're doing everything according to code. Because if there's a fire, right, because of your work in the property, the insurance will not pay. Or might not pay. Most likely will not pay. So if there's a fire, what happens to the property? It loses value. Can the lender recover that that property or its value? Probably not. Do you guys understand? In this case, right here, until the mortgage has been in place for at least 30 days, they say you cannot get a second mortgage or additional financing against the property. Why? Because priority in public records is set by whoever reports first. So if the lender lends you money today and there's somebody that lends you money tomorrow against the same property, it's just a matter of who gets the public record first. That's the one with priority. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So they just, again, all these six items is to protect the lender's interest. Not the ownership, the interest, which is keep the property at its best value. You got it? So that if there's a foreclosure, I can recover. If you cannot afford it, at least you can sell it and we can recover. Simple as that. So these duties and obligations is to protect you and the lender. Good? Yes. Questions? Nope. All right. Look what it says here. Failure to meet any of these obligations. It says any, right? Mm -hmm. Can result in the borrower's default on the note any of the obligations. So that means if you finish the basement and the lender finds out, what can they do? What is it? No, you defaulted. Right. What can the lender do? Thank you, pay They can foreclose. Yeah. Thank you for finishing the basement. Get out. And they have the right to do so. Not get out like that, but they'll take you to court. Why? Because the property is standing right now. But you cannot guarantee your work. There's no CO, right? There was never a building permit, so there's no CO. But if there's a fire, do you guys understand? As soon as the lender finds out, 
they have the right to foreclose on it. The, the most common reason why people default is for lack of payment, right? The lender usually does not know that you finished your basement or attic or whatever. Yes? Just out of curiosity, if I did want to fix something, and obviously you need a permit, mm -hmm. correct? Obviously, yes. Well, you well, should. Unless you're the other end. At what point do you call the mortgage company and let them know that you're doing something? Before, like you, get the, before you get the permits. Okay. So that, that, that's actually something that the homeowner does prior. Listen. They're not going to say, hey, you can or cannot do it. All they want to know is that, hey, did you get, are you getting a permit? Okay. Yes. Okay. Send us a copy. We just want to make sure everything's okay. okay. That's, that's it. Nothing else. So as long as you have a permit, it's fine. Yeah. Technical. And then they follow up. Did you get the CO? Okay. Simple. Yes. So you need a permit to finish your basement? <laughs> Depending on what you're doing, if it involves electrical, if it involves plumbing, absolutely. There might be other reasons that that's from town to town. If you're changing any structural areas, then yes. If you're just putting sheetrock, maybe not. The problem is people usually don't just finish a basement by putting sheetrock. They say, hey, let's put a shower, let's put a toilet, let's put all this electric, outlets. the electrical outlets. Have you heard of anybody finishing a basement and just putting walls and no outlets? What's the point of the walls? Yeah cover everything and you can use the space without electricity of course in the basement. Candles. I'm sorry? Candles. Candlelight. It might be nice. Oh, right? My. Until there's a fire. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got it? Yes. Cool. Provisions for default. A mortgage may include what's called an acceleration clause to assist the lender in a foreclosure. If a borrower defaults, the lender has the right to accelerate the maturity of the debt and to the, that means to declare the entire debt due and owing immediately. What does that mean? It means that you had borrowed $300,000 okay? and you had 30 years to pay. Traditionally, this is the way it works. You pay down the debt until it reaches zero. Traditionally. Okay? Yes. Well, let me ask one question. Okay. Is you know what I realize? No. Tell I me. realize it's like, you pay, if you pay a house like for 10 years, you really pay for 7 years or 5 years, uh huh. That's called paying interest first. For the first twenty-one years of a mortgage, I think uh, Ricardo went over that. The first twenty-one years of a mortgage is mainly interest. No, 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 no. It's like when you do your calculations, it's like you call the bank. Mm -hmm. You have this mortgage for ten for ten years. Mm -hmm. You did ten years ago. Mm -hmm. And the bank say you want twenty four and a half months. You understand that? No. It's like I bought this house ten years ago. Gotcha. They called the bank. So that was two thousand nine. Two thousand nine. Yes. I called the bank because I realized the time they did that house on online. They did FHA. Okay. And FHA, it's like, it's not, I don't know why the reason, I don't, I cannot tell you which the reason, maybe it's my mistake because I don't know what happened over there, mm -hmm. because we put down $100,000, okay. and they did FHA. That was a mistake right away, yes. But you know, then for me, now it's a mistake, but that time, I don't know I have FHA in that house, for real. Mm -hmm. And I called the bank and I said, listen, I want this house FHA. I'm going to change for conventional, you know, okay. because I have this house for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Oh, but you want in this house 24 and a half months. I said, listen, I bought this house 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I headed to another mortgage. You know, I called another bank. It's like I have my house for 17 years. 
but I own in my house like more years than supposed to. Okay. That particular mortgage, was it fixed or adjustable? It's fixed. Okay. I would have to look at it because it's not like that. What usually, so the reason why I was asking if it was adjustable is if you don't put enough towards the payments, then it's going in principle. Um, if you never did a loan modification or any type never. of adjustment to the loan or forbearance or whatever, there's no reason for you not to have reduced by 10 years. The term is 30 years. If it's fixed, the term is 30 years. But I cannot talk about it without seeing your mortgage. So if you have the mortgage documents, bring it to me and I'll look at it. What do you mean, just the... Uh... Mortgage. There's a document called mortgage, 14 pages. Okay, when you do the closing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just bring it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So well, what I was saying here, the acceleration clause. Maturity, that means the balance reaches zero on the 30th year, correct? Yes? Supposed to. Supposed to. Apparently not for the other Anna because they extended a few years. <laughs> but it's supposed to reach there. Zero, zero, right? But life happens. Life happens. And somewhere here on the 15th year, you stop paying. Your mortgage payment was 2000 a month. That means that your final payment, if it was a fixed rate, your final payment would have been 2000 Now, I told you guys that um, when you finish payment, for them to, I mean, if you stop paying, for them to foreclose on you, it has to be at least three months, right, of non-payment. So, it's three months at $2,000. How much do you owe? 6000 right? wrong because for foreclosure purposes they accelerate the maturity that means this date right here accelerates to this date that means they want the full balance 200 it's like a balloon payment two hundred forty thousand dollars is what they ask for in foreclosure because of course after 15 years of paying you're halfway you still owe roughly 80% on the principal. Crazy, right? Yeah. Because the first 21 years is mainly interest. Now, these are rough numbers. It's a little bit less than that. Uh, but these are rough numbers for you to understand. Just like a credit card, if you just send the minimum, you'll pay for 16 years. That $1,000 credit card for 16 years, if you just send the minimum. Here's the same thing. You're borrowing money and you're paying for the amount of years that you borrowed. So if you pay it sooner, if you send extra, then you pay less in interest. You pay it faster. Now, that doesn't count with the down payment. It's prepayment as you go, all right? So they don't foreclose you based on $6,000. They foreclose you based on 240, because now they're like, well, you haven't paid three months. What guarantees me that you're gonna pay the next one? Even if you're able to come up with six, what guarantees me, the lender, that you'll keep on paying? So the foreclosure action is going to start with a whole balance. Your Honor, they defaulted. We want the full balance. Traditionally, there's something called mediation. So before we divorce, right, lender and borrower, before we divorce, there's mediation. Say, hey, can we resolve this amicably? Right? If nobody uh, shows up, if nobody reports, then they proceed with a foreclosure and guess what they're looking for 240. so the acceleration clause literally says instead of paying every month until the 30th year i want you to pay now the full balance of the loan okay this is the acceleration <coughs> clause so they accelerated the maturity from the 30th year to the 15th year, the day of the year defaulted. Right, Sonia? Yes. Okay, great. Would you just apply your payment just to get a um, mediation? Different story. All right. Good? Questions? No, I do want to make a drawing. You want to make a drawing? You have time. I'm oh, sorry, you're talking to Karen. Sorry about that.
<laughs> Karen can multitask. While you owe interest, no, the other way, yes. You can pay just interest and pay principal at the end. But you cannot pay 300 pay. Could be book, you never know. So the interest always has to be paid first, always. Then principal. If the loan, let's say this $2,000 includes principal, interest, tax, and insurance, then tax and insurance is taken out first. Whatever is next goes towards interest, and whatever is left, the final thing, goes towards the principal. Can you prepay interest, uh, principal? That's a different story. Yes, sending extra money. Absolutely, anytime. You still gotta pay interest as long as you owe money. Say what? If I decide you can do 40 years more on mortgage, then it's been a raise. Mm -hmm. First 10 years, you pay interest or you pay interest? Interest only. Interest only. Ah, because the same. Like I said, the way the payments are addressed is first interest, then principal. You done? Yeah, cool. Next. All right. Well, it says other clauses right above assignment of the mortgage. In New Jersey mortgages, a defeasance clause ensures that when the debt is repaid, the mortgagee has no further claims on the property. So, Right above the feasance clause, I want you to write defeat the bank. Why defeat the bank? Because you're able to pay off your loan. The balance is now zero. And they have to release the grip they have on the property that you pledged. Okay? So the feasance clause, you defeated the bank, the balance is zero. Very good. The property is now fully. Yours. Yes. I know you're talking about this one um, clause, but how many other clauses are there? There's the acceleration clause, there's the feasance I mean, clause. Two, oh, there's more. Okay. There's the alienation clause coming up. Yeah. You have to understand everything in your, um, uh, there's the default clause, everything in the mortgage is a clause. Default provisions, that's a clause, and so on. It's 14 pages of clauses, excluding Santa Claus. Yes. So this is included in the mortgage? This is all part of mortgages, yep. These are all part of it, okay? It literally says, if you finish paying the balance, like it gets down to zero, the bank has an obligation, we're gonna talk about it in a second, to release that grip, and that means that they have to file in public records that you paid it off, and they know it's no longer a valid lien, meaning the bank cannot come after your house anymore. Unless you're a sweet old couple in Florida where Bank of America foreclosed on you after you paid off like 14 years ago. Anyway. What? You heard of that? It was all over news. For like two days. It's it only for like two days. Everything else lingers forever in the media. The stuff that we really need to know, two days. Anyway. Assignment of mortgage. You guys heard of this, right? Where like uh, you close with Bank of America at 12 o'clock in the afternoon and 4 p.m. is with Chase. The loan was transferred to another lender. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that's the assignment of mortgage. It says right here, that a note or bond is usually a negotiable instrument. So, as such, it may be sold by the lender to a third party or a signee. Do you guys get a paycheck? No. If you have a paycheck, really? If you have a paycheck, 
You go to the bank, do you deposit? A check is a promissory note that says, I owe you, and go to the bank. I promise that there's money there waiting for you. Isn't there? Right? You can call the boss, but, you know, the boss doesn't have the money. <laughs> Sucks for you. Uh, anyway, isn't this the same thing that you do? You sign a promise, you know that promise to pay. If not, can get the house, right? Um, so it's an IOU. It's, it's a negotiable instrument. But when you go deposit the check, has anybody ever looked at their check after it was deposited? Yes. All right, because you get the statement, it comes with a copy of the check, right? In the back of it, there's a stamp. Signed stamp most of the times, right? That means it was endorsed. Because when you deposited the check, you had to pay to the order of your bank. You assigned the check to the bank, meaning you assigned the rights to collect the money to your bank. And your bank's now telling your boss's bank, hey, we received something here, an instrument that says we are entitled to collect that money and then release it to our um, customer. You guys understand? Because it's not you collecting. It's your bank collecting from their bank. Yeah. Great. So it says it right here. On payment in full or satisfaction of debt, the assignee is required to execute a satisfaction or release of the mortgage. So I said that you closed with Bank of America, right, Monica, let's say you closed at 12 o'clock, and then Bank of America sold it to Chase. If you finish paying off, can Bank of, is Bank of America the one that needs to release or is Chase? Chase? Chase, the assignee. Well, in the event of default, let's say you don't pay and we're gonna foreclose, Bank of America has no further dealings with you because they sold it to Chase. So Chase is the one foreclosing on you. You guys understand? Yes. The problem is, we're going to talk about it better tomorrow. The problem is, sometimes Chase does not exist in your life. Because you're still going to receive letters from Bank of America collecting from you. The, the mortgage was assigned but Bank of America retained the right to collect on their behalf, like a property manager. So all this time, and this happened a lot in 2007, 8, 9, and so on, with all these foreclosures, people said, no, 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 no. I was paying Bank of America. Who's this lawsuit here with Chase? I don't know who they are. I have no, no accounts with Chase. So they ignored it. Behind the scenes, it was sold from Bank of America to Chase but you never felt it because Bank of America was still collecting from you. The only difference is the letter that used to come from Bank of America now says this is an attempt to collect a debt, meaning they're debt collectors versus the company that actually uh, originated the loan. Yes? Does this change now? Okay. Same process. Yeah. Actually, tomorrow we're going to talk about primary and secondary markets. The what? Stand up straight, I can't hear you. So when you default your payment, your credit card, you go to the collector's Same thing. So they're selling your information to somebody else. Absolutely. Different story, but yes. S similar process. They might have the right, they might not have the right. All right, next, on page 186, it says right here, we're talking about recording mortgages. Why do we record? Because this establishes the lien's priority over future mortgages or other liens. Yes? Yes. So the event of foreclosure, we know who's here first. Interest rates, we have usury. All right, usury is the charging of unreasonably high rate of interest. If the bank charges you 50%, is that okay? No. In some states it might be. <coughs> Luckily, in the state of New Jersey, it's not. But in some states, every state has their own laws for usury. Some, it's completely free. They can charge you whatever because you're borrowing money. It's their rules. 
All right? Now it says right here, the federal government, in an effort to make mortgage money freely available, has exempted most regular lending institutions from mortgage limits. What does this mean? Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Chase, and so on, they're not bound by mortgage limits. They can charge you whatever they want. Now, private sources for money, like let's say I lend to you, I'm bound by these laws. These are the examples. The seller who takes back financing, actually right here, where it says takes back, I want you to scratch, take, takes back, just put a, a, a thin line across it. And right above it, you're gonna write seller. Only because I want you to think every time you see takes back, I want you to think seller financing. That's all it is. Okay? They lend to you, but they take up take back the mortgage. A third party, like real estate broker, grandfather, investor, who may lend the buyer money to purchase someone else's property. So again, if I lend to you, I'm bound by these laws. In New Jersey. Sellers may charge no more than 16% on the first mortgage. However, they may charge as much as 30% when they are selling their own primary residences. If the seller is taking back a second mortgage, the limit are 16% on the first 50,000 and up to 30% beyond that amount. If I lend money to you when a private third party, someone not the seller, and not an institutional lender, so not a regular bank, makes a mortgage loan, it is essential to find out ahead of time what the usury limits apply. So if I lend to you, I need to know how much can I charge you? Because a mortgage that charges an illegal rate of interest is not legally enforceable. That means that the borrower might have a good case for not repaying the debt at all. So if you're being overcharged, ridiculous amount of interest you go to court and you don't have to pay back sorry but if you want to lend me money and say 50% I'm like sure I know I don't have to pay you back take me to court that's what it is so if you stop paying what can you do okay. nothing all right but consult okay. with an attorney <laughs> No, you still have to pay. Your, your rates are good. Hmm? It's only for private. What it says imputed interest, you can cross out. And the city exam doesn't talk uh, about it, so you should be okay. If you guys want to read it, you can. But it's not tested. So I'm going to move forward real quick. We're going to go to prepayments. What does it mean to prepay? Well, to pay sooner or earlier, right, than uh, required. So you have 30 years. Let's say you closed today. Today's Monday, tomorrow's Tuesday, it's the Mega Millions, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say tomorrow you win the Mega Millions. Your closing was today. So you bought a house today, congratulations. You owe half a million dollars for the next 30 years, right? But tomorrow, you win the Mega Millions. And if you do, just remember me. But tomorrow you win the Mega Millions. You should receive your money, let's say, in a week or two after all the paperwork and whatever goes to the IRS, whatever goes to the lottery company, whatever. You receive your money. And you say, why would I wait 30 years? Technically, you're two weeks into this mortgage. Why would I wait 30 years? Let me pay off the mortgage. Okay? In the state of New Jersey, there is no prepayment penalty. If you get into a mortgage today, you want to pay it off in two weeks, they cannot charge you prepayment. This is only for institutional lenders. So Bank of America can't, Wells Fargo can't, Chase can't, TD Bank can't, but if I'm the one lending you money, I can charge you prepayment penalties. You guys got it? Yes. Private lenders can charge. Institutional lenders cannot charge prepayment penalties in New Jersey. That's what I was going to say right now. I just got stuck with it. Oh my God, yes. Yeah, because I called the other day so I can pay off my car and they wanted to charge me. 
Oh, this is for mortgages, so I don't know. I'm like, is why car? Are you? Yeah. I was busy. I said, you know what, I'll call later. They charge your penalty. Yeah. But yes, it's uh, as you're saying, usually I talk about that. They hit us, private lenders, on the usury. Like, we can charge more than a certain interest, while the banks can, right? But then here, the banks cannot charge prepayments, and we can. Okay, so, it's, so it's not the same for all other kinds of loans? This is just for mortgages. Mm -hmm. Cars, they might be able to charge them. Yeah, I think yeah. Smaller loans, student loans, whatever loans, they might be able to charge them. But for mortgages, no prepayment penalty. Mm -hmm. okay. Next, this you guys already know, which is first and second mortgages. What is a first mortgage? Well, if there's no liens on, the, on this property, the first lien is the priority lien, the primary lien, in this case, first mortgage. Anything that comes after that becomes secondary mortgage or junior liens. You got it? It's based on whoever records first. Now, the priority of... Uh, hi, Anna. Hi. How are you? I have a question. What's up? So why, right, because I don't have a mortgage, my parents do. Why would you need to get a second mortgage? Would you need more money? So let's say your your parents have been paying for 10 years, right? In the case of Anna, that means five years. Um, the other end. So let's say they've been paying for 10 years. If they paid for 10 years and they, they, they're paying down the debt, that means the, the amount that they owe, right? Mm -hmm. But in the past 10 years, property values went up. So there's a gap between property value and the balance on your mortgage. This is called equity. If you have equity, you can borrow money against that equity. So let's say you want to cash out. You need to, to do something, go to college or whatever it is. You want to tap into that money, you can. That's, that's a second mortgage. The first mortgage is still there for another 20 years. But you get a second mortgage out of the equity. You got it? So that's what it is. Uh, now, right here, the priority of mortgage liens may be changed by execution of a subordination agreement in which the first lender subordinates his or her lien. What does it mean to be subordinate? Underneath. Underneath, right? Be secondary, right? Why would I, let's say I'm the first lien. Why would I agree for a second lien to go first in the event of foreclosure? I'm telling you that, hey, I have priority, but in case of foreclosure, it's okay for me to get paid last. Why would I do that? For instance, yes? So, if you have the, a first mortgage and a second mortgage, for example, um, the second mortgage will ask um, to pay you to go first and for the first mortgage they'll go second and the second mortgage will receive the payment first so because they're paying the first mortgage right, mm -hmm. to give them the, the money first okay. it's kind of like that right? gotcha so we're switching but why what's the real reason uh, if, what if the if the second mortgage is higher than the first mortgage maybe there's that's a big risk now because if the second mortgage is higher than the first then what's the guarantee that i'll get paid there's no guarantee there could have been a structural yes. agreement between the two lenders right? yeah. well there is an agreement because otherwise that, that that's the subordination agreement that allows me to go second All right so let's piggyback on what you're saying please construction right okay. why um well, I guess if there's undeveloped land and you took out a mortgage and you want to build a house. Okay. And then to... Um, Let's consider a regular property. We don't have to go with undeveloped land. Let's say you have a house, so one family, or two family, or three family. You bought it 10 years ago. Go back to the construction part. Mm -hmm. You want to build an addition or... You want to build an addition, second you want to extend, level. you want to finish the basement, second level, whatever. 
Okay? You get a second mortgage based on the equity. Yes? And also based on the future value of the property. Now, what we're saying here is you're asking for a second mortgage to build on your property. Children? Twins? Twins? What's the question? Sorry. Oh, it's okay. I just want to make sure you guys are paying attention to this because a lot of people get this confused. So let's say I need money to, to better my home. And I know if I fix the property, if I do, um, if I finish the basement or the attic or at a level, as we were saying, right, it's going to be worth way more. It costs me 30, 40, let's say $50,000 to fix it. I owe $100,000 on the first mortgage. Usually, traditionally, construction loans say, I'll lend your money, but I have to be first. Because a construction loan is based on something that doesn't exist. Does that make sense? It doesn't exist. I'm going to lend you based on the unicorn that I believe in. But do I see the unicorn? No. So there's a high risk. That's why usually second and third mortgages are higher interest rates. Right? So there's a high risk. Now, I will lend to you if the first mortgage says it's okay for them to come in second place in the event of foreclosure. So now we address the first mortgage. We get here and say, hey, listen, first mortgage, they will give us money to build, to improve, and make our property worth, let's say, $100,000 or $200,000 more. If you come in second place in case of a foreclosure. Now, why would the first mortgage do this? Because it will benefit both. Any improvement to the property improves the value. Based on the balance on the loan of the first mortgage and the amount that they're requesting, the total is 150 in, in my example, right? If the property after being fixed is gonna be worth two, 250, 300 or so, in the event of foreclosure, we all get paid because the property is worth more. Does that make sense? So it's a lesser risk for the first and a lesser risk for the second mortgage. Sure, no problem. I don't mind. I'm first. I don't mind being second at the event of foreclosure. You guys got it? It has to benefit all. Yes? Now, this whole conversation you just had with yourself, is that something that, like, we're I was actually, talking to myself? Yeah. <laughs> like, the whole, like, first mortgage and second mortgage. Who, who, who's, like, kind of, like, Doing that. Was I answering myself? I just want to make sure. Because that's the definition of insanity, right? When you talk to yourself and answer yourself. Well, I'm just trying to figure out, like, okay, I get the whole scenario, but who's doing that? Like, is it like the first? No, it's between lenders. It's between, like, we're not involved. So, well, we kind of are, because when we do the mortgage application, us realtors, no. Well, no, as like a homeowner, for instance. So, if you make an application to a lender, right? right then at this point, the lenders will start communicating if there's okay. a need for this. Okay, thank you. Right? But obviously, both of them must come to the table somehow because somebody's going to have to sign the subordination agreement. Right? So at one point, we do get involved because we have to agree to this as well. It's not just the lenders. Would, would there be a reason why you wouldn't agree to it? Who? Like as the, the homeowner? homeowner? It wouldn't make sense. No, no. Agree. You don't, you don't have to agree, but you have to be part of it. Okay. So the len lenders agree between themselves to switch position, right? right? You're just signing that, that, yes, in case of foreclosure, okay. you guys get paid and I still lose the house. Okay. It's like another mortgage on top of this. Okay? Good? Questions? Complicated? Not right. Mm -hmm. Where it says satisfaction mortgage lien, we already covered this. I'm so sorry, but is that the only instance, only situation that would cause these two? It just has to be something that will benefit all, and traditionally that's the only way. Unless you fell behind on something, you have judgments, taxes, or whatever, you need to get a second mortgage to do so, and if there's enough equity. So it also go, all goes based on equity. If there's enough equity to satisfy everybody, Let's do this. If you're in the declining market, no. Upcoming market, no problem. 
And there's people that don't pay their mortgage, uh, their taxes, I'm sorry. So yeah, that could be another reason. Okay. Um, we already covered this. If we finish paying it off, the mortgagee, who's the mortgagee? Lender. The mortgagee is the one that must release the lien and record the satisfaction of mortgage, which they might charge you for. Okay. Next page, I want you guys to highlight exactly as it is here, and I'll explain in a second. Where it says assuming a mortgage, and I'll explain in a second. Just highlight. Where do we put the bubbles? I'll tell you in a second. Okay. Where it's green, mainly. Okay. Bubbles, arrows, hearts, <laughs> sprinkles. Where it's green? What happened? Fairy dust. Fairy dust? I forgot that one this morning. You good? Yeah. All right. I like this one. I'll explain in a second. Assuming a mortgage and buying subject to a mortgage. In both of these, these are exactly the same. There's just minor differences. But the concept is exactly the same. Where in both of these, I take over your mortgage payments. I'm the buyer, you're the seller. So I take over your mortgage payments. Just like cars. Have you heard of this? Taking over somebody's car payments? Here's taking over somebody's mortgage payments. All right? So both of these, I become the owner of the house. And I take over your payments. But in one, which is assuming, we call the bank and say, hey, Bank of America, as an example, right? We call Bank of America and say, hey, Bank of America, my name is Bruno, and I'm taking over uh, Denise's mortgage. Is that okay? So in one of them, assuming a mortgage, I get the lender's permission to take over a mortgage payment. In fact, the new mortgage statement comes under my name. So the bank now knows who I am. You got it? So you will sign a mortgage with somebody and somebody... Uh, I'm assuming a mortgage. Assume the mortgage. So yes. you will sign the mortgage? It's like that, yes. And somebody is assuming the mortgage. In, in both of them, there's an assignment. It's just that in one of them, we call the bank. Okay? And we let the bank know that we're here. In this one... We never spoke to the bank in the subject too. So I just moved into your house. The deed is transferred to my name. And I'm sending money to the bank. Because, I mean, the lender just wants to get paid. He doesn't care where the money is coming from. Most of them don't even look. They see, oh, check, break, balance, done. That's that it. That happens in New Jersey, huh? I'm sorry? That happens in New Jersey? Buying subject to? Yeah. It happens everywhere as long as we don't tell the bank. The moment the bank finds out, that's the problem. Yeah, but the check okay. has, to, has to go from the... From who? If, it, if I... Uh, let's say Karen takes over my mortgage, she has to send the payment to remind me with my check. Why? Because they don't care if the checks come from no. Karen's account? No? No, they just care that it comes from somewhere. Oh my God. They just care that somebody pays. As long as the check doesn't bounce, just pay me. Listen, if you owe me money, I don't care who pays me. Just pay me. Yeah, but you know. Simple as that. If we get the check from your from your boss and you put it in your bank account to pay the money, it's the same thing. No, my checks. No. I thought it was the same thing. 
No. How? I don't know. We get paid. You're not gonna. That will be a direct deposit and direct then, withdrawal. <laughs> well. You have to have an ACH. Now you have to change the ACH, which is the direct withdrawal from your account, to Karen's account. Because Karen's the one that took over. You have to understand, in this scenario, Sonia has nothing to do with the house anymore. She's gone. Karen took over. She's the new owner of the house. That's what I was telling you guys. I take over your mortgage payments. I become the owner. Goodbye. This oh, is my I house. I changed the title, right? I'm sorry? I changed the title. The deed. The deed, yes. Okay. I don't want to get into the title right now because we have a chapter just for that. Okay. Um, yeah. But it's the deeds. That's what transfers the ownership. The deed, grantor, grantee. Okay? So I'm the buyer. I took over your mortgage payments, right? In one, we tell the bank. The other one, we don't. The thing is, the one we tell the bank, which is assuming a mortgage, right? The one we tell the bank. If, right here, if the, um, if I don't pay your mortgage, like if I fail to pay, because the bank now knows me, they're going to sue me. The one that is sued as a primary. Guess who they're also going to sue? The other, one. the other person as a secondary liability. A sign or a signee. You guys remember this? Yeah, we did. We talked about it in contracts. Because I'm transferring the duties and liability to somebody else. In buying subject to, does the lender know me? No. So if I stop paying, can they come after me? No. If the sale does not pay off the entire debt, the new owner is not liable for the difference. So if there's a foreclosure, you can't come after me. He'll always come after the seller. Okay? So the biggest difference between these two is liability. In assuming a mortgage, both parties are liable, the seller and the buyer. In buying subject to a mortgage, only the seller is liable for the mortgage, not the buyer. But in this case, because the new owner, the deed was transferred over to the new owner. In both of them, the deed was transferred to me. Okay. And then if they're going to foreclose, they would do, they, they would do, a, they would do a search. Of the a search of what? The mortgage obligation is on whoever signed or agreed to pay. But I still lose the house. Yes. But you cannot come after me personally. A lien against the house is still a lien against the house. It has nothing to do with the property owner. Okay? We talk about this in easements and um, encumbrances and all that stuff in Chapter uh, 6. Right? You can't come after me at time of foreclosure. But you can still take the house and satisfy the debt. Okay? Sorry, hold on. Stephanie. Why would anyone do this? Was that your question as well? No. Okay. So let me hold on to that one. What was your question? So, to Denise's point, um, so when you transfer the deed, you also have to transfer like that mortgage situation to? That will be here. Assuming. Yes. The mortgage yes. comes to the new person. Mm -hmm. In this one, nobody yeah. knows yeah. the new so person. So, to avoid this, you have to transfer the mortgage. To avoid, avoid the liability or reduce liability, it has to be this one. Okay. To avoid it completely, it has to be an actual closing with a new mortgage, novation. Got it? Now, to answer Stephanie's question, so, so usually I, I answer that one or I address that one myself to finalize this section. Why would somebody do this? Well, you want to retire. You can't sell the property in regular terms right now. So you allow somebody else to take over. Or in the wake of all these foreclosures and mortgage mess, people show up at your doorstep and say, hey, you can't afford it. Here's a bag full of money, walk away. I'll take over. This part that I just told you is 100%, 1,000%, a million percent illegal. You can't show up at people's door and say, hey, here's money for you to walk away. But it happened a lot. And people are desperate, they're like, oh, I can't afford a mortgage, my life is a mess, Here's twenty thousand dollars. I'll run with it. You know what? Keep the furniture. I'm out. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This was happening a lot. So there's two sides to this: is either helping somebody buy, right, or you you can't sell. Whatever is happening, you can't sell, and whoever's buying is helping you. 
So either way, okay? Now, on the right-hand side on top, we have alienation clause. Alienation clause. Don't bring aliens to the land. I'm serious. That sucks for me. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks for you, right? No, write it down. Don't bring aliens to the land. Don't bring aliens to the land. Welcome back. Uh, <laughs> what is an alien? Something foreign. What? Something Karen? Foreign. Did you just say Karen? <laughs> well, she said Sonia. Okay. So, if you were not born here in this country, you were an alien. And that's why you get something called a legal alien or legal resident card. Right? The green card. Yes? Yes. Where they allow you to stay. So think about assuming a mortgage is where you became documented. They know that you're here and everything is great now. You're a legal alien. And not a citizen, you're a legal alien. You took over the mortgage. The subject to you're undocumented. Nobody knows you're here, supposedly. You got it? Mm -hmm. So every mortgage has something called a alienation clause, which is the right to deport. Simple. As soon as the lender finds out that there's a new owner or an attempt of transfer of ownership, they have an alienation clause or due on sale clause that says, uh-uh, you're not changing ownership unless you pay us off. The balance with us has to be zero because, listen, I know you, I don't know the, this new person. You guys understand? Yes. So if you want to underline or circle, alienation clause, or you can write it on top too, is called due on sale clause. The full balance of the loan is due at the time of sale. And they do this to either uh, permit or not somebody from assuming the loan. Okay? So I'm going to say, hey, it, it's okay for you to take over the mortgage. It's okay. I'll allow you. Legal resident. Green card. <laughs> okay? Yes. So in the part where it says um, assuming a seller's mortgage. Sorry for the whole immigration status thing. <clears throat> Just a comparison. Yes. When they, I'm sorry for my throat too, but um, when they call the mortgage company to let them know that someone else is going to assume the loan. Okay. Can they look at their records to oh. see if there's an alienation clause? Do they put like most mortgages? Most mortgages have a statement that either allow or not to assume a loan, and that will go with the alienation clause as well. Um, nowadays, you don't find them uh, like assumable loans. You don't find many, especially after what happened um, in 2007, 8, 9, and so on. Okay, but you need to know about this. So alienation clause is the due on sale clause. Almost every mortgage has this. That says, before you think about transferring to somebody else, remember, you have to pay us off first. Okay? And that's why at closing, right, the balances must be zero before it transfers to the new owner. Pay off all the lien holders before it transfers to the new owner. You guys got it? Mm -hmm. It's the due on sale or due at the time of sale clause. Next, we have foreclosure. You guys already know all about foreclosure, right? Somebody doesn't pay, go to court, take the house. Simple. It's not that simple. No, that, no, that's what foreclosure is. It's simple. That's what it is. You don't pay, go to court, lose the house. Now, it says right here, the mortgagee must search the public records to find out the parties who have claims against the property and to find out whether tenants are involved. Who's the mortgagee? Lender. Lender. The bank, always. So they have to search public records, find out who has benefits or rights or claims or interest in the property. Because they can't just foreclose, they have to notify everybody. Mm -hmm. Now, 
as it says, all must be notified that the suit is in progress, a list pendants is placed in public records, and the public auction called Sheriff Sale is advertised in local newspapers. You guys already know that back property taxes and special assessments have first claim on the property, and whoever buys the real estate has to pay them. Junior liens to the one being foreclosed are wiped out by the sale. So if there's secondary mortgages or third mortgages and so on, and there's not enough money to pay them, they get wiped out by the sale. They get wiped out as a lien on the property, not personal obligations. We're talking about liens on the property. So that means that the property, whoever buys it, comes free of liens. Whoever wins the auction must pay 20%, at least 20% of the auction, and the rest within 10 days. So let's say the winning bid was $100,000. You got to give $20,000 that day and $80,000 within 10 days. So you cannot finance this. You cannot finance this unless you get a private lender. Hard money loans. Okay? Uh, so conventional lenders will not participate yeah. in this. I'm sorry? Yeah. Conventional lenders will not participate in this. You could not go to Bank of America and say, I want to buy a property at auction and they give you money. Yeah. One time I entered to, I was at the auction. This club, it's, uh, I did this because this person sell the house. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's already, it's a prayer uh, foreclosure, right? It's a prayer foreclosure. And the guy, so her, okay, we're gonna we're gonna buy this house as we should sell. She did all the papers, all the papers she did. And when it comes, it, she tried to call him many, many times. It's the point he goes at the farm. She had the mortgage already approved for that house, okay? And I know, and he calls her and say, listen, if you want the house, I have somebody to buy the house and he give some money and this Private person is going to buy the house for you, and I said, "No, we're not going to do that. I'm going to auction Elizabeth, and I'm going to buy the house." Okay. And I did. Okay. I said, "You come in with me. If anything, it's like you put already your name, and you have the mortgage already approved, and you just switch. That's where I did. You know, I put the twenty percent down. I left her, and she have everything approved." And she don't need no more money. She used because it's already approved for the house. Okay. You understand? Yeah, no. Option. Who is the lender? Let's... Who lends you the money? Who lends me the money? It's my money. Okay, but you're saying at auction. I put the twenty percent down. Okay. Okay, because the girl don't have money. I put the twenty percent down on cash. I raised You're, you're not listening to me. The end buyer. The end of the buyer because she Listen to me. The end buyer who who bought the house, who won that auction, who gave her or him the money? The bank. Because which, I gave her Which the bank? Money. That's what I'm asking. I don't have no idea. It's the guy, the name is Mike. The, the, the I'm just asking. Was it Bank of America? Was it Chase? I don't have no TD idea. TD Bank. Have already proved You're not listening to me. I'm telling you that institutional lenders Institutional lenders, Bank of America, Chase, Wells Fargo, TD Bank, um, any of those lenders do not give you funding to buy at auction. No, okay? it's not to buy at auction. The same way it's okay, so that's all we're saying, period. Sorry, stop. Let's talk about that later. In your mind, keep that in mind for the, for the exam. Let's talk about that later. I'm not okay. cutting you off because it's not part of the exam. At auction, you must... Pay cash, at least 20% at the auction, the rest within 10 days, period. And how do you pay? Period. And we'll stop right here, and I'll talk about that with you after. Because there's no way for you to buy the property at auction with institutional lenders, period. There might have been some other type of arrangements, some other type of lender. I'm sorry, Anna, but not for now the other end i'm sorry we'll talk about that later but for state exam purposes what you need to know state exam purposes this is what i'm trying to get you to understand state exam purposes 
cash at auction. Period. <laughs> you got 10 days to come up with um, the difference. And within those 10 days, what can the person do? Come up with a whole amount and rescue their property. Okay? Mm -hmm. Within those 10 days. Beyond the 10 days, there's no further right of redemption in New Jersey. That means the person has effectively lost their home. So whoever wins the auction is not the owner until 10 days have passed and the sheriff has transferred to your name. That means that during those 10 days, can you knock on doors? No. You're not even entitled to step on the property yet. Yep. Okay? You, by law, you cannot step on the property. That is called trespassing. After the 10 days, what can you do? As soon as it's under your name, you can knock on doors. If it's not under your name yet, you still cannot do anything. You have to have the sheriff's deed in your hand to go knock on the door and say, hey, I'm the new owner. Until that is in your hand, you will be trespassing. Understand that. If the house is still foreclosed, I'm sorry, say it again. As, as a former owner and as a tenant, um, as a former owner, you're supposed to leave at auction. People stay. The sheriff, the new owner, has to then start a process to take the person out of the house. The sheriff will show up to kick you out. So there's an order. The owner, not the tenants. The tenants have the same rights. We talked about this in leases. They have the same rights with the new owner as they had with the old owner. So a tenant cannot get kicked out unless they're not paying. I'm sorry? So unless they don't pay. Unless they're not paying. If they're not paying, then there's an eviction. Okay? The, the owner is the one that's supposed to, or the former owner, is supposed to leave once there's a sheriff deed because they no longer own the property. Or unless they negotiate something with the new owner where they stay as tenants, which sometimes happens. Sometimes happens. I always negotiate sometimes yes absolutely all right where it says deeds in lieu of foreclosure right above in lieu i want you to write instead instead you're going to do this instead of that that's what it is so instead of me foreclosing on you i'm the lender instead of me foreclosing on you just give me the deed sign it over to me Give me the keys, and then we will not go through this extensive process that's very expensive to me and very stressful to you. Just give me the keys, walk away, I will not pursue you any further. Simple. So this is called a friendly foreclosure because it's an agreement instead of litigation or civil action. You guys got it? Yeah, yeah already, I know. Next, we have short sale, where it says short sale, you're going to write selling for less than what you owe. Selling for less than what you owe. Short sale, selling for less than what you owe. Now, there's nothing short about the process itself. All we're saying is you owe half a million dollars. Property is worth 300000 The lenders sometimes agree, as it says right here, sometimes agree to, for you to sell for whatever the property brought on the open market. So I know as a lender that you owe me half a million dollars, but I also know that I prefer to recover some money than no money. So if the market says 300000 uh, if the market says 300000 right, then let's sell it for 300000 It's okay. Go ahead. All right? Uh, Francie, let me address that in a second, okay? Why would we, like we're losing the home, why would we agree to a short sale instead of just foreclosure? 
credit. Because if you have a foreclosure on your record for the next seven to 10 years, you might not be able to buy another house. For the next seven to 10 years, your credit score is screwed. But if we do a short sale, in a year or two, or a deed in lieu, or a bankruptcy, in a year or two, you might be able to buy another home. So the idea behind these alternatives, deed in lieu, short sale, bankruptcy, loan modifications, all that stuff, these are alternatives to foreclosure, is really to reduce the damage to your credit score. And unfortunately, our lives are ruled by our credit, right? So that's what it is. All right, so Francie asked the question. So going back to the sheriff. Within those 10 days, the owner pays the debt in full. Does the sheriff return your deposit? So the only way for you to lose your deposit is if the 10 days have passed and you did not take action. There's an option with the sheriff, so you know, to extend the 10 days to 30 days. You just pay a premium to have a few more days. If after that extension, you still did not pay, you lose your deposit, okay? So to answer Francie's question, if the homeowner that's losing the house comes up with all the money and recovers the property, yes, you get your money back. If it was your fault that you didn't complete the, the transfer, then you lose the deposit. 20%. 20%. That's why there's a lot of people stressing because they entered into these quick um, events that told, told you everything about <laughs> investing, right? And then you go to share. All you have to do is buy a property at a good deal and transfer it to somebody else. Somebody else will buy it, right? So there's a lot of people coming up with the 20% because that's all they have. And then they know a buyer that wants this type of deal. Uh -huh. But then that buyer doesn't want that deal. And you're stuck. Now you have X amount of days to desperately get rid of the property, even if at a lesser price, just so you don't lose all your money, okay? So careful with investments and careful with wholesalers out there. There's a bunch of them failing at these auctions. They're actually overbidding on properties. No good, all right? So Francie, I hope I answered you. And now deficiency judgment. If a short sale or a foreclosure brings less than the amount that you owe, the lender has the right to come after you for the difference. It's called deficiency. You owe half a million, the bank recovered 300. What's the difference? 200,000. You might still be personally liable for 200,000. So you don't have a house, but you still have to pay at least 200,000. Okay? Deficiency judgment. Now, most lenders nowadays, right, don't even go after because they know things are so tough, it's just going to take forever. So they might not even go after you. So instead what they do, and that's why, guys, we need to know this, and we need to refer uh, homeowners to CPAs. Because there's a lot, of, a lot of these lenders, what they do is report as a loss on their books. On their accounting books then, and if it's a loss on their books it's a gain on your books if it's a gain on your books you're going to pay capital gains you pay taxes on the house that you lost yep. crazy right mm -hmm. so make sure when you talk about short sales or foreclosures to anybody make sure you also tell them hey you should look into getting a cpa because as soon as you lose your property or if you do a short sale or didn't lose or any like anything like that there's tax consequences, okay? So what can the CPA do? The CPA knows how to file to the IRS. There, there's, until 2017, I'm not sure I haven't followed up on that yet, if it was renewed again or not, but until 2017, there was a, um, a tax forgiveness clause. that if it's your primary home and you lose it, this, this cancellation that the, the lenders do, you don't have to pay capital gains. If it was an investment property, then you have to pay capital gains on it, okay? So your CPA might know about this. Most tax preparers do not know about this. So make sure you have a CPA for this, okay? I even had to show legislation to, to certain CPAs. So that gives you an idea. If the CPA does not know, most likely tax preparers definitely do not know, right? 
They must know how to file. I'm sorry? They must know how to file because they do get the statement. They have to know, yeah. No, but a friend of mine, a uh, personal friend of mine, he actually uh, went through this. He had to pay the IRS $68,000 because that was a capital gain on the house he lost. $68,000. And it comes, Bruno, you told me. I said, ooh, whoa, whoa. Because no, no, no. when it comes to money, friends and family switch real quick. Bruno, you told me. And I'm like, oh, wait, wait a minute. Let me print it for you. And I went, it was not in the Internal Revenue site. So the IRS didn't have on their site yet. So I printed January 15th uh, legislation, January 15, 2017. I printed out the house passed uh, on, on this law. It just wasn't on the IRS site yet. So shouldn't CPAs know about this stuff? Yes. They should be aware of the laws. His CPA, CPA did not. So I asked him, is, is it really a CPA? It is. Well, fire him, get another one. Here's the law. Bring it to the next CPA. The law. So he had to have what's called the 1040X, which is an amendment of your taxes. And he was able to get a credit, not the money back, a credit really? towards his taxes. Well, yes. better, than nothing. <clears throat> better than nothing. Yes. What part would be capital gains though? up to 15% of whatever was canceled. So $500,000, yes, so $500,000 is what you owe, 300 is what the bank was able to recover, there's a difference of 200,000, that's your gain. Okay. So you pay up to 15% of that, $45,000 there. Yep, you had almost 300, sorry? It's like capital gain is what? You have to pay taxes on the money that was forgiven because it's a loss for the bank, but it's a gain for you. Okay. okay. So again, we don't have to know these details, but we have to know that there's tax consequences. So anybody losing their home, there's credit and there's tax consequences. Got it? Let me help you. Let me help you by helping you sell your home and let me help you by giving you this type of advice, consult with a CPA before we complete this transfer. Like when they go to foreclose, it's not a problem, right? You might still be liable for it. Foreclosure, there's a cancellation of, of debt as well. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, what if there's more money? What if there's more money than what they owe? They're not going to do it. Mm -hmm. so they? they have to. In fact, the very last letter from court, the writ of execution, is where the the sheriff the judge tells the sheriff, hey sheriff, sell this property at auction. Any monies from the proceeds is to pay off the debt. Any surplus, because that's what it's called, is to be reserved to the homeowner that loses the so in this case the defendant. Reserved. Most people do not know that there's money there for them. Yeah. All right. So it's very important. They either have to contact the sheriff, which is the first step. Or they can go to yeah, mj dot gov. <coughs> and a few years back, two thousand fourteen or fifteen, used to be right here on top. I always like to mention this for a reason. Because apparently, a lot of people have been claiming this. I tell this to all my students and all my clients. So now, it's all the way at the bottom. And it says right here. Can you guys see it? Mm -hmm. Search for unclaimed property. Almost hidden, right? Click on it. Unclaimed property, right here. Search for unclaimed property again. But wait, we have to search again. Three times, click search. You're going to click on personal. You're going to put your information. You're not a robot. And search. And it's going to tell you if there's money waiting for you or not. Now, this could be from a class action lawsuit. This could be from sheriff auctions. It could be from a, a bank account you had years ago you don't even remember. It could be inheritance. It could be a bunch of stuff. It's just there waiting for you. I never found money for myself, but I found for a lot of people. 
give it a try. There might be money for you. Yes. So that's NJ.gov, but does that cover anywhere in the United States? Yes. Actually goes to, if you guys notice right here on top, it says uncleanproperty.com. So the thing is they're going to find you at the most recent address, and they're going to ask you. Once you click on it, don't do it now, but once you click on it, it's going to say, hey, have you lived in these addresses before? If yes, claim it. Okay? And obviously, you got to have something that references you as the person entitled to it, because there's a lot of John Smiths out there. All right? So once you put your info, they're going to verify if it was related to you or not. But there might be money. One of my students had 600 something dollars. Wow. Another one had $2. You know, some of them have nothing. But hey, it's money. If you guys find money, just let me know. I accept donations. No, I just want to be clear. Before you think about uh, turning this into a business, I tried in 2014, and that was the year that the law changed. You cannot collect money or find money for other people and ask for a fee. It's their money. It's publicly available. So, cannot. Okay. I, I, I tried. As soon as I found for one client, I had like 400 people in my, my uh, database at the time. And I said to all my 24 employees, stop what you're doing. Run all our clients and let them know if they have money. And we we're going to charge a fee, obviously. But outlawed. We still searched. We still helped them. If there was money, there was. If there wasn't, there wasn't. That's it. So not a business anymore. You guys got it? Yep. Go look for your money. You never know. Last, we have real estate owned. In front of it, I want you to write by the bank. That's B-Y, the bank. R-E-O, not Oreo. Like the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development decided to say. Ben Carson. Oreo, yeah, the milk, yeah, sure. No, Mr. Secretary, we're talking about the banks taking over property because people do not pay and nobody bid high enough. That's what Oreo is. It's property acquired by the lenders through foreclosure. You guys have to understand, the reason why foreclosure happens is because the bank is not in the business of real estate. They're in the business of money. So they try to sell the property first at auction. If they don't sell at auction because people don't bid high enough, there's a reserve price, right? If they don't bid high enough, the bank says, okay, we're not selling, so we're gonna put in our inventory. It becomes REO. And then some brokers, real estate brokers, specialize in handling REO for banks. Simple as that. All right? Any questions? I know it's early. I know you guys are like freaking out, but any questions? No? no All right, cool. A lot to digest. Go have fun. <laughs> what? For real? For real. For real, for real. You get to go home. For real, 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 real. All right, people at home.